Hi, I'm James, and today I'm going to look at this. It's come out today, Dungeons and Dragons Adventurer by Hachette Parkworks. Um, one ninety nine for issue one. I mean, at that price, what do I lose for having a look? So, so let's start our look through. Um, let's be honest, for an experienced gamer, this is probably what you're picking it up for. Uh, dice tin with seven set of dice in. Uh, the usual four, six, eight, ten, percentage, twelve, and twenty. Uh, black with red writing, which is nice and readable. They're quite light dice, but they, they do look reasonable. Um, I like this dice, I've got a decent score in it straight away. So we've got a nice little little set of dice. Um, being me, I have bought multiple sets, and I'm actually wondering if I can actually carve out some more of the form. Let's have a look, is it? Oh, even better. Because you've got another layer underneath. What I'm thinking of doing is carving out space for a couple of extra D6 in there. It's one of my big bugbears that in any dice set you only ever get one d6. I always would rather have three d6 or even four d6, but decent enough little tin. Um, so let's go on to the magazine itself. And we've got the usual bits and pieces. Thing to return to the news agent, uh, the subscription offer with all the details there. I mean, looking at what you get there. Um, so issue two. It's got another set of dice, gold dice and an adventure map, okay. Issue 3 has got a dice tray. I mean at these prices, £4.99, let's be perfectly honest, you'd pay that for, for them in all probability. Um, you got stand-up figures as well. The, ah, that, the dice tray is only if you're subscribing, okay. A binder with a third delivery, DM screen, a dice jail, okay, looks like an MDF, fairly basic one, okay. Um, so yeah, no, nothing exceptional, that's what we'd expect. So we've got details of the, um, so the collection, so it talks about what is Dungeons and Dragons, what the different sections are, and we'll look at that using a real example. Um, just talks through what you get what you're gonna get okay um, oh yeah. I'll, we're going to talk about. so that's pretty much the same sort of thing okay issue two is available a fortnight today okay um, so we've now got the the actual magazine so let, let's take the time and look through this because I think this is actually quite quite interesting it's some very interesting bits so we've got the basics what is a role-playing game, what is a, dun what is a dungeon master and so on. Uh, talks a little bit about how to play, very very basic sort of stuff. Structure of play, how you actually set up and start a session. Now this next bit, um, I think started getting interesting, how to, roll how to roll dice, but it explains about the difficulty classes, uh, how ability checks are, exceptions rules, saving rules, attack and damage roll, Advantage and disadvantage. That's a lot of information on that page. So that's quite good. Then we come into the Dungeon Master. How to be a Dungeon Master. I like their advice. It very much is along the lines of you're going to make mistakes, you're going to get it wrong. Don't worry, enjoy. This was I find very interesting. Session Zero. Session Zero is becoming much bigger now um, and I like how they've discussed about it. They talk about phobias and it talks about modifying the adventure if one of the character if one of the players has a phobia. And I think that, that's a nice thought. To see it this early on that you are giving the, the the DM an opportunity to do that. I, I like that. And there's various other sort of simple bits of advice. So introduction to player characters gives you four player characters and we'll come back to them. Talks about how ability scores work. Yeah what the modifiers are, skills, yeah, this is all fairly straightforward. Uh, goes into the different species, talks about the four that we've got represented, touches on languages, character classes, I and mean, you can see the artwork is very nice. Some of it's recycled, some I haven't seen before. Um, 
but yeah, there's, there's some, it's you know there's, there's good information. The four character classes that you have in the with the characters, I like that. Bit on equipment and how that works. Four different packs because each of them has got a different type of pack, so it talks through that. Now this is why I, I find it starting to get interesting, really interesting. Fandolin. We know it's it's obviously big. Uh, we've got the new uh, adventure coming out, replacing the Lost Mine. Uh, gives you a little bit of the history, um, and it emphasizes. It does, as I read through this, emphasize that you're going to get. It's going to be predominantly about the, the Forgotten Realms. If you're a Greyhawk player, Eberron, anywhere like that, I don't think there's going to be that much in it for this. Whether later on they'll branch out, I don't know. And then we have this, an encounter, a mini adventure. It says it'll take an hour to two hours, I think that's quite reasonable. Um, it's a basic straightforward combat encounter, well, linked encounters. But here's the interesting bit, it's at the Stone Hill in Fandolin. So we've now actually got a map of it which is quite nice. Um, basically it's been taken over by cranium rats. Now if you know anything about cranium rats, they're created by mind flayers. I'm spotting links to a certain new adventure here. So this could even be used right at the start of Lost Mine of Fandalva, or the new version of it. Um, I can see this slotting in when the PCs arrive in town for the first time. So yeah, I like it. There's some, some nice little NPCs. Not much detail on how to run them, um, but enough for a new DM. Gives you the, the new um, magic items they can find, a portion of healing, yeah. And Bright Blade. Now I like that. It's a plus one longsword. Yeah, it's a plus one longsword. But there's just little touches that I like. It has little glass orbs in the hilt. That actually glow. Now, I like that. It gives you the history of it. That is how to do a magic item. Explains it perfectly. So we've then got stat blocks, we've got a swarm of rats, we've got the cranium rats and I love that artwork. That to show the players, it's the hands or the paws, that makes it for me. Um, some very nice little detail in there. It's a nice little encounter. You've only got um, in the inn a grand total of seven areas. That's it, seven areas. But it's enough for a new player. It, it's it's going to generate your first night nicely. Now this was a bit of a surprise. I didn't expect to see this. I was expecting this to be sort of integrated. It's a quick introduction to combat. How to run combat. Very simple. And then it's even got a three page example. Again with some lovely artwork. Um, and I like that. Nice touch as well. It's got the metal clips for actually attaching it into a ring binder. So I thought that was, that was, that was brilliant. Rather than having that within the main bit. It's a nice little addition. That's small enough you can put chuck in your bag at tape with you when you're starting off. And then we have the character sheets. Um, they're very similar to the standard character sheets. Uh, it does go on about using D&D &D Beyond. Quite, quite likes you to do that. Um, it even has a QR code to get to it. Um, slightly modified from the, from the normal ones that you see. Um, but we get the four characters. So we've got, interesting they've given them names, which is not something that Wizards of the Coast have done in their um, ones. They've usually let you do that yourself, but I don't have a problem with that. Uh, they've not put alignment in, which I find interesting, because they haven't explained alignment yet. But I thought they might have put it in and then explained it later. So we've got uh, Kranto Thran Thranax, who's a human rogue, uh, a charlatan. Okay, um, nice little illustration on the back. This bit for spell slots I think is a bit of a waste, particularly for this character, particularly when you've only got, um, you know, equipment is basically there. I, I'd have rather a bit more space, but I can understand standardising the sheets. We've got um, 
Razorgar Storm, Stormhelm, who's a Hill Dwarf Cleric. It seems to be a staple these days. Always have a PC who's a Hill Dwarf and Cleric. That, that seems to be happening in every release now for, for, for a long time. And Cubit the Cat, who you haven't seen for a while, is back. Still causing chaos as ever. So, again, nice, nicely done. Uh, you've got all the spells explained. Um, and it, it splits the cantrips and, and the level 1 spells. It's got the spell slots in and explains that in there, so that, that works well. Irana Illoris, Wood Elven Fighter. So again, you know, these are nice illustrations. I think the artwork in this is really good. And Merovich Farfoot. Um, I quite like this character. A Lightfoot Halfling Wizard. Not something you generally expect to see. So. I do quite like that. I, I quite like the illustration, even if they are wearing boots. I know sometimes halflings are portrayed with boots, sometimes without. That's a personal preference. I, I prefer them not, but hey, that, that, if that's the biggest quibble I can have. So, when you look at all that, particularly the dice for 199 that's a real bargain. Uh, I will be honest, I've bought three sets already, mainly for the dice, so that I can have that 3D6 all matching. Um, the encounter is worth it on its own. Um, four pre-generated characters, that's always useful to have. Um, only thing really missing from them, which I think compared to the starter uh, sets, is there's no actual real background for the character. So you'd have to come up with that. Okay, that's not a problem for me, but for, for a new player that's probably a bit more complex and might suffer a little but yeah you know we're qui we're on little quibbles aren't we with this so don't know if I'm going to keep going on this um, I'm glad I bought this one I'm, I'm going to pick up the next one to see where it goes uh, I don't know how many parts there are going to be with this it's not particularly clear but it does refer in there to going as far as fifth level with your characters by the end of the campaign so we're not talking something the size of one of the books worth of adventures. We're talking something along the lines of what the Lost Minds of Fandalva was. A um, little bit bigger than the um, Stormwreck Isle and a bit smaller than Ice Spire Peak. So it gives you an idea of what, sort of, how much we're going to get into, get into it. Um, because obviously you've got the rules and background and things as well. But... I'm definitely going to pick up the second one, like I say, and we'll see where we go from there. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please click on the like button below so that I know what people like and I know what to make more of. Uh, alternatively, if you've enjoyed it and think you'd like to see more, please click on the subscribe button. That way you get notified by YouTube whenever I bring out a new video. And you never know, there might be something in there that you hadn't considered, because I do cover a variety of things on the channel. And finally, if you have a little bit of cash going, uh, I now have a Patreon account. Um, I'm always looking for patrons because at the end of the day, let's be perfectly honest, it's a good way for me to get a little bit of money that will use to buy review items or to travel to museums and so on. Uh, I don't put a huge amount on that. At the minute, all we've got is one tier charging a pound uh, a month, which just, as I say, helps cover my costs. See you soon.